This is Rage 2, developed by Avalanche Studios and published by Bethesda Softworks. Rage 2 is a first person shooter where you take on the role of Walker, the last ranger of whatever planet we're supposed to be on, I think it's Earth, whose compound is attacked by bad guys and you're gonna get revenge or something, I don't know. The story is very, very weak. Among a great many other things that are also weak, so the game is a first person shooter as I said, drops you out into an open world almost immediately and more or less just kind of gives you guides on uh, where you should go to continue the story if you like but you're not really pushed to do it. That being said the open world is very empty uh, and kind of boring as well. Story wise or narrative wise, I won't go into it too much because it's, it's not even worth going into but the game main plot is seven quests, seven very short quests. You know, you could complete, if you were able to, you could complete those quests in like, I don't know, two hours maybe. Uh, the game pads it out by saying you have to reach a certain uh, familiarity or a certain level with various characters before their plot will continue. So that kind of pads the game out because that takes a while to reach. You reach level, level five where you can do their second quest or whatever. Which just requires you to go off around the map and just tick off objectives. Go over here, kill those dudes. Go over here, find object in the area. Go over there, blow up some fuel tanks or whatever it is. And going over there, of course, requires you to drive around in this horrible, horrible vehicle. Uh, all the vehicles handle like complete shit. It's kind of surprising because the Just Cause uh, Avalanche Studios made Just Cause and the cars in Just Cause handle fine. So I don't understand what's going on here. And the best thing I can kind of say about Rage 2 is some of the side quests, or side options, activities, and the main quests involve you, obviously it's a first person shooter, shooting a lot of people. And that's the good part of the game. And this is where uh, Avalanche Studios uh, were helped out by id Software on this game. Now id Software, you might know, are the guys behind Doom. The guys behind Doom 2016, which was my game of the year of 2016. Uh, and it is clear that they were just given the shooting part. The combat part id software just did that and it seems avalanche studios maybe did the rest uh because the the shooting the combat is really really good they've got a lot of different guns with different uh firing options you know uh, alternate options and things like that you've got your overdrive mode which changes up what guns do so your gun might normally uh when you take your rocket launcher for instance it, it can fire it can lock onto guys and so on it's alternate fires for locking on uh, but it's overdrive mode just fires like a cluster bomb or something like that the shotgun Just normally kind of slow fire or your alternate fire is like a more focused shot taking out one dude But it's overdrive just spits fire at everybody, you know It's really good in that sense and you've got also extra abilities. You've got a bit of a Bioshock thing going on where you can force push people uh, you can set up a shield you can kind of teleport around you have this dash thing to kind of lose targets and things like that it's very fast you know combat it is very doom you could almost you could almost take doom and just slap on some rage 2 assets and you'll have rage 2's combat anyway that's easily the best part but the rest of the game just is not interesting at all um i'm not sure the combat itself is enough to recommend rage 2 because it is very very good combat but there's so little else to the product like, there's still plenty of stuff left on the map, and I'm definitely somebody who tries to tick off literally everything in the game, but I have zero interest. Because the game just ends so fast. Or the main plot, rather, ends so fast, and then it's just clean up on the map, so... No, not great. Combat good, everything else... <laughs> Rage 2 is available on PC, PS4, and Xbox One.
This is Observation, a adventure puzzle game developed by No Code and published by Devolver Digital. In Observation, you take on the role of an artificial intelligence aboard a space station called SAM. You are accompanied by Dr. Emma Fisher, who has woken up on the station to find that there's no one else on the station, and SAM's systems appear to have been mysteriously reset, and there's all sorts of shenanigans happening. Uh, and would you maybe help her out a little bit and see, and see what you can do? Uh, and that's all I'm really going to tell you about the story other than uh, it's really really good and you should give it a go. It's a very uh, atmospheric and very gripping uh, narrative. You could kind of liken the game to a bit of uh, kind of like an interactive narrative kind of thing, like a walking sim, but uh, there's puzzles uh, and you don't really do too much walking since you're an AI, you don't really have to do a whole lot. Gameplay wise you kind of jump around various camera feeds on the station trying to interact with things through the camera, to, through the zoom version and then uh, connecting them up to your OS and then trying to interact with them there. Uh, occasionally you do get jumped into a kind of communication sphere and that allows you to sort of pilot it around the station to reach areas that cameras can't see. And it's kind of interesting in that you're sort of responding to Dr. Fisher and that she asks you a request and you respond in the way a computer might respond. You know, you, you parse the request and see what, what does she actually mean. Maybe you can find something in your files to respond to or about, and then you can just like say, is this the information you wanted? And you just say, no, you big idiot. It's not what I wanted, uh, or something like that. I say it's a puzzle game, but the puzzles aren't exactly super taxing. They're, they're fairly obvious, they're solutions, except for one puzzle that uh, I don't know what the answer is, and I randomly guessed it and got it right. So yeah, I still don't really know the answer to that puzzle, or rather the solution to the puzzle. I know the answer to it, but not the, not the solution exactly. But anyway, if you like the kind of uh, lo-fi sci-fi, like the, like the original Aliens and things like that, uh, and you're looking for a really strong narrative game, then Observation is definitely of interest. This game is made by, as I said, No Code, but the members of the team that worked on this game had previously worked on Alien Isolation, which is another tense, you know, atmospheric, uh, space station-y type game, uh, so I guess they've got a they've got a wheelhouse anyway. Alien Isolation is very good. Observation is also very good. It is available on PC and PS4. where we are above Earth and if we've lost any altitude. This is Dragon, a first-person investigate -em up uh, developed and published by Red Thread Games. Dragon is set in the 1920s. You are playing a, an American naturalist called Edward, who's accompanied by his uh, young ward, Alice, and they are traveling to a Norwegian fishing village that is out in the middle of fucking nowhere. You're traveling there because you received notification, you received correspondence, that uh, your sister, your long missing sister, was spotted in this remote Norwegian fishing village for some reason. So you've come out to investigate and to maybe find her and bring her home, but wouldn't you know it, when you get there, the whole town has vanished. Or rather, the whole town's population has vanished. The town is still there, the people aren't. 
and your job is to figure out what the hell happened. And that's the story. And that's all I'm telling you because this game is a very story based thing. Uh, I go on to say that gameplay wise, you, uh, you basically you're having a sort of running conversation with Alice. Uh, you make various responses uh, depending on what you think or what you think of the situation. So Alice will say, where do you think everyone's gone? And you can make a, you can make it say that, oh, the weather is really bad. Maybe they're just all inside or maybe they've all gone off fishing and, you know, it's a fishing village. Maybe everyone's gone fishing. Uh, and they're like very basic ones, but you can uh, obviously think that later on down the line, maybe what happened to you know, these people? Maybe they were murdered. Maybe they all just disappeared. Maybe it was ghosts. You know, you can make up your own thing for it. The two characters that you'll interact with most, yourself uh, and Alice, are very, very well acted. Um, they've got a great back and forth. It's pro it probably makes sense that they recorded their uh, their lines probably together because there's a lot of talking over each other and things like that. That just you know helps build up a, a great conversation between the two of them. Like you can find in Walking Sims that particularly when you're by yourself, it's very quiet, um, but not in Dragon. You know. Uh, Alice is almost constantly talking with you and you are talking with her and you're responding, you're commenting on things in the environment, you're commenting on clues and things like that. Uh, the game itself is uh, meant to be a kind of commentary on loneliness and there's a bit of psychoanalysis that comes into the game as well. I had a lot of fun with it. You can see from the footage that my PC is not really up to snuff <laughs> anymore. This game is uh, currently only available on PC and maybe on Mac and Linux as well, I'm not sure, but it's not on a console. So apologies for the, my crappy PC. Uh, the game itself though does look very nice and I think my PC was just straining to record and play the game at the same time. But um, gameplay I had off recording looked very, very nice. It's a very pretty game. Built off the Unreal Engine, so there's no, no there's nothing really stopping them from porting it to a console, except for money, I imagine. Uh, an interesting side note for the project is that it was funded by uh, the Norwegian film, um, let me get this right, the Norwegian Film Institute, and they also received a bit of a grant from a European Commission on like local arts and things like that. So that's interesting because I've never actually heard that before, <laughs> before, getting the kind of grants from actual government bodies and other artistic institutes. It's usually the big publishers that shell out the money. Anyway, Drogon, uh, really interesting story, and if you have a PC that's a lot better than mine, which probably won't be very difficult, uh, you should give it a shot. I'm not 17. Nor are you 70. Put some spring into your step, old sport. Did you see the flag? It's at half-mast. Someone died. So this is it, huh? Nice digs. But seriously, where is everyone? Perhaps everyone's indoors. The rain's picking up. You first, old bean. Hello? Anyone there? This is A Plague Tale Innocence, developed by Asobo Studio and published by Focus Home Interactive. Plague Tale is an action-adventure stealth game set some stage in medieval France during a, well, a plague, as you might imagine, from the game's uh, title. You play Amicia, a French noblewoman, uh, and she is accompanied by her younger brother Hugo as they attempt to avoid the French Inquisition, I guess, or just the Inquisition, who are hunting down her brother for some mysterious reasons that may or may not be connected to this swarm of rats, this big rat plague that is, uh, well, plaguing, I guess, the, uh, the kingdom. Gameplay-wise, this involves you more or less trying to avoid combat uh, and just encountering various kind of survival puzzles, some stealth puzzles and things like that, so trying to 
you know, avoid getting caught, so, you know, misdirection or knocking out guards when you eventually get the opportunity to do that. Uh, or trying to avoid rats by either using light or using fire, torches, things like that, just manipulating the environment to get past them. As the game starts, it kind of gradually introduces you to different uh, mechanics at play. So Amicia has, of course, stealth ability. She can hide in tall grass and things like that. She can use rocks to distract guards. She can use fire to kind of move rats around the place. She also has access to a sling. So on the very rare times where you have to engage in combat, she has a sling. Uh, and you're basically trying to get headshots all the time because that's pretty much the only way to deal with enemy soldiers. Uh, and you eventually get some other tools that allow you to deal with more armored opponents and things like that, but you are more or less avoiding combat for most of the game. It's kind of got a bit of a Last of Us feel to it in that there's a kind of tense combat-wise. You don't really want to engage in combat if you don't have to. You're kind of constantly crafting materials and constantly looking for upgrade materials. You even have a workbench that is almost, you know, it's very, very similar to how Joel upgrades his stuff in Last of Us. There's a clear influence there. Uh, additionally to kind of the Last of Us idea, but it's, uh, it's level based, so it's not like a big open thing. This is clearly a game that probably had a small budget, but they definitely used it well. They focused on the things they wanted to do. They're very tight mechanics. There aren't many mechanics, but they're very well done. They're very tight. You know, there's like throwing things or throwing things with the sling, and that's pretty much it, but they have a lot of different variations, so it's good that they do that. The game comes across as a kind of escort mission, but it hasn't. It doesn't really have the, the horrible things that you associate with escort missions, so your, your escort uh, is pretty much with you all the time. They stay more or less latched to your side. It's not really an issue. You can tell them to stay and wait for you, but I've never really felt or I haven't come across a situation where I've had to do it, at least not yet. I'm only halfway through the game, so maybe maybe later on it'll be, become a problem. I'm really enjoying it, you know, like this kind of tight focus on what the game can do well. There's lots of good set pieces, the environment is really well done. There's a couple of really cool areas that I walk through in the, in the opening of the game, and the opening section is the first half of the game. It's like, it's a lot of fun, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, and I was kind of expecting it to be and I mentioned it in, in previous videos, I was really looking forward to playing the game, but I was expecting it to be kind of janky, buggy, but it's not, you know, they, they've clearly, as I said, they focused on what they wanted to do, and they've polished it, it's really good, I haven't encountered any real problems with it. The only problem I have encountered is Hugo as a character, because he's a child, and you know, kids are stupid, <laughs> but uh, that's, uh, that's nothing to do with the game, really, I, I imagine he's supposed to be a little annoying. But yeah, I'm looking forward to playing more of this. I think I will probably put this on the long, very long list of games that I will eventually LP on the channel. But yeah, that's the idea. Give this a shot if you can. It is available on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Light! With her! With her, Hugo! Run, Hugo! We did it. We did it. We did it. We... Amicia, I want to see mommy. I don't want her to be dead. Well, look at you. A fresh ranger. I'm Phoenix. I know I look good, but I drive better. Let's you and me go for a spin. Those were some of the games I played for May 2019. Observation and A Plague Tale, the big standouts for me. Observation is just so well put together. It just feels like, feels like a kind of high-end TV show, in a way. Very strong story. I played it. I was only going to play it for like a bit just to get recording footage for it, and then I ended up playing the whole game. So uh, I'm actually kind of dying to do a playthrough of that for you guys. Plague Tale has got a very strong first half. I'm very impressed with it, and I'm very much looking forward to finishing that off, hopefully in the next couple of days. Dragon is very interesting. I was playing it on my PC, which isn't really strong enough to kind of do it justice, but I think I got enough out of it. Interesting commentary on, on loneliness and communication with people and things like that. Rage 2, very disappointing. It was kind of billed as this sort of bullet storm meets the kind of nihilist zaniness of the, the Mad Max series. And it just isn't that. 
kind of it almost feels like it's false advertising it might even be false advertising i don't know uh, but i just didn't get the feel that they were going for and they were putting out in their in their marketing just doesn't come across in the game at all really strong combat but i don't think it, it's enough to kind of pull the rest of the game up looking into next month though for june so we'll finally be getting a look at bloodstained ritual of the night it's a game i've been going on about for quite some time it's a game i backed on kickstarter and i've just been dying to get the finished product in my hands so that'll be happening next month it's a kind of throwback to uh, the castlevania games really really hoping we've got something special here also the sinking city which was supposed to appear earlier in the year and on the channel but uh was pushed back and now it's coming out this month so again a kind of cthulhu investigate slash somewhat shooty things that i didn't realize was in the game but there's shooty things in it as well looking forward to that too judgment which is a kind of it's the Yakuza developer taking the Yakuza engine and not doing Yakuza with it, just doing their own thing. Uh, the Yakuza series is going on like six games now and the story is getting very heavy so it's hard for new people to jump into that but Judgment should be a nice fresh start, new IP, new franchise but with the same mechanics that people like. And then also uh, Crash Team Racing which is a game I missed when it initially came out, but I hear a lot of people like it. So I'm gonna give it a, a look and see if the rema or the remake is any good. I'm not really a racing kart racing person. I don't really like them that much, but we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. Elsewhere on the channel, uh, I took a break from Sekiro because uh, my, my day job was kind of busy uh, this month. So I'll be getting back to doing that. We're about halfway through that game now. Also E3 happening. Uh, in June, at the start of June, so hopefully some good news coming out of that as well. Uh, hopefully something good. Hopefully Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII Remake, Jesus Christ, it's been a long time. Hopefully that'll get some kind of decent uh, information this time. Anyway, if you liked uh, the games for this month, or didn't like them, or whatever, you know, the, you know, the usual comments and such. Let me know what you think. Uh, otherwise, uh, see you guys around on the channel. Bye-bye. Security scanning not available. Nearby hostile.